the landscape of gaming had shifted in a way that I was less familiar with because I controversially have never really liked first person shooters. Oh, man. All the way back to Goldeneye. It's because you like to see your character's feet. I get it. I love third I love third person shooters quite a bit. I've gone on record on this podcast before saying there was a game called Jet Force Gemini yeah. on N64 that was the first ever third person shooter I remember where you pulled a trigger and it switched into a first person esque mode. That I loved. That I loved. Young John! Hey everybody, welcome back to Tubby Talk. Today we're going to be controversial and we're going to get into some of the games that you like that we hate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's a lot of games out there that uh, everyone loves and, you know, sometimes you feel like the black sheep of the family and you're yeah. like, I don't really want to play this. Uh-huh. Steve, you feel the same way? Don't don't get me started. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the <laughs> point of Get me started. That's the point of this. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's yeah. the show. Why do you start? Because I'll talk all day. I'll rant about this all day. Um, I'll start with kind of a, a story because mine's a little bit less a specific game and more a generation that destroyed me. Um, I was a hardcore gamer uh, through GameCube, through GameCube and into Wii, I would say. I even had a Wii U for, for a hot minute, but at one point I put it up on the shelf and I was done. And it was because the landscape of gaming had shifted in a way that I was less familiar with because I controversially have never really liked first person shooters. Oh man. All the way back to Goldeneye. It's because you like to see your character's feet. I get it. I love third I love third person shooters quite a bit. I've gone on record on this podcast before saying there was a game called Jet Force Gemini yeah. on N64 that was the first ever third person shooter I remember where you pulled a trigger and it switched into a first person esque mode yeah, for that aiming, i loved yeah that i loved but this wasn't for me so my most controversial i said you know it's funny i started this on a rant saying it wouldn't be controversial <laughs> this is easily the most controversial yeah, thing goldeneye. You i mean could have that. said i am not pro goldeneye wow i have to say it i i i it, it's probably because i am such a big fan of the solo experience and the solo experience of GoldenEye didn't hit me like it did many, many others. Multiplayer hit me, but again, I would rather be, you know, platforming or playing Smash Brothers with friends or something that's not a first-person shooter because there just became this amazing gap in skills. Yes. Because for whatever reason, I, I consider myself a gamer. I truly love... We have a studio dedicated to talking about video games. Yeah. I love video games so much and they mean so much to me and are so much of my core character. But something happened when first person shooters came out and kids lost their souls and minds to this thing of first person shooter and they never let go. So it being, this represents the start of it becoming a first person shooter world. And that sadly applied to all gaming in like a certain generation. I feel like Xbox 360, that era, yeah, that was, was all that was first person shooters. Back of Call of Duties and Halo specifically. So I got a question for you, and this might get more controversial. How do you feel about Doom? Did you play Doom? Yeah, Doom has a special place in my heart because it was, you know, like a, a scary horror game. And you're talking about the, uh, hey Dylan, number three there. Thanks, buddy. So... This I distinctly remember playing with my buddy Adam in his basement late at night, and it was fun, but I remember sitting shotgun for a lot of watching this game, and there's enough going on that I'm enjoying it. Yeah. We're also not walking around looking at polygons. Yeah. You know, this is, this is it still a looks like a different. video game it's of the time. Yeah. yeah. See, this, uh, to me, I love Doom. I loved it then, and now, like, I go back, I'm like, this holds up. In fact, it might hold up better today than it did back <laughs> then. Like, I play this, and my heart gets pumping, and, like, I just get, it's it's pure, pure adrenaline. It looks so good. Yeah. It still looks great. Like, th these big blocky pixels, it, it's beautiful. Something I love about Doom is definitely the guy, the character at the bottom, Doom guy, and how his he changes he's depending a, on how beat up you are. Oh, uh, that was Wolfenstein. Yeah. Yeah, he's just Doom Matchkowski guy. was... But yeah, controversial is that's the most controversial thing I could say. Yeah. Is I am not a big first person shooter guy. Wow. But I love me a third person shooter game. However, on your advice, I did uh download one of the ports of the of Doom 2016. Oh yeah. And the, the Doom 
follow up and I was enjoying it. But again, there's something about first person shooters that is in you guys that is not in me. Well, I don't well, have that dog in me. Well, 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 <laughs> you know? well, like Doom 2016 too. I can't like go as fast. That, I don't know yeah, why. That could be a third person game. Like there's not much about that game that better because of first person, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I agree with you in that point. Um, I don't know. Uh, it seems like Chris has a... Has no, something yeah, to say about I think that, it's got to be first person. It invented the genre. It's well, yeah, 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 but if you played a game like that with the same type of movement and fast-paced action, I've played games like that in third person, and they seem fine to me. There, there's a lot of it's, weapons in that game that too. involve, like, precision aiming really quickly, and, like, maybe you can do a railgun in third person. It wouldn't yeah, be Yeah, that's same. what reticules are for. Use those in first person yeah. shooters That's the well. word I'm looking for. I love yeah. a reticule. Yeah, yeah. Like over the shoulder. Game. Yeah, you're not free to, aiming in most of these. Doom you were original because I don't think they have reticle technology yet. Well, and, and, <laughs> and I'll tell you, you were, I got to bring up one of yours. Resident Evil is uh, great for me because that Resident Evil 4, when that came out, the original kids you can only on the move GameCube. But, so fast. So, but yeah. that brought out the reticle. That yeah. was a really fun way to play that game for the first time because you were just... Psh, 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 yeah, like and all before. the other ones, yeah. And this one, you had control, and you could activate that control whenever you wanted it. So what I'm sort of hearing, though, is that you don't like first-person shooters because it's the first time you felt slow and old. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, I, but, <laughs> but let me, but to be fair, I was 10 when I felt that way. Yeah. It was just that there's something about a first-person shooter that creates this wild addiction in children and adults that didn't get me. Yeah, and they get super good at them. Exactly. They get so good to the point where they take over the industry yeah. and you can no longer play. And I don't I even mean couch co-op. You can't find someone who's mm. like in your league because <laughs> people just get pulled into these things and play them for hours and hours and hours. And you know, you're not going to keep up with me if I'm, you know, hopping platforms, but I can't keep up with you if you're firing bullets <laughs> at my head, you know? Uh, and I guess that's what it is, is, is I didn't, I didn't have that in me. I still don't have it in me. You probably would have hated some of the land parties that we had. Cause we, Played one like of our Quake favorite three, Quake three, three was like our favorite game. Mm -hmm. And it was all about Twitch reactions and jumping and shooting yeah. and, uh, it, it, insane. Uh, but it's so fast, and we would have so much fun. We had lots of fun. We never very good at it. Yeah, I wouldn't well, say we were to, good. You know, compared, like you said, like lots of other games that mainlined it. But we were, we had lots of fun playing Quake Three Arena specifically. It was a yeah, railgun, plasma gun. So this person is playing like a turtle. By the way, like, <laughs> yeah. this is the slowest <laughs> I've ever seen Quake Three move. Uh, but this is Quake Three. Uh, usually, when you're playing this game and you're you're you know moderately decent at it you're bunny hopping around like a madman and like rocket jumping and flying it's it's amazing but i understand like it's it's not for everyone it, it's different it's different but i will say there were there are two instances where i was won over by the genre mm. the first being the original xbox halo mm -hmm. those land parties were some of the most fun times i've ever had with friends yeah However, we had a game where it was me versus everyone because I played like such a animal and like a like a weirdo <laughs> where it was just like me playing, trying to get away and people trying to find me and things like that. And me setting up with like a sniper rifle or ideally a bazooka and just, you know, just, trying to, to hit me, people and just ruin those, their yeah. days. Also, the, the thing I really appreciated about that first Halo was the uh, shotgun, the one that the pistol was so strong. Yes. Yeah. Two, that the shotgun could could be a one hit kill if you got them in the back of the head, like if you if you physically hit them. Yeah. And so there were things in that game, I don't know if I would call them cheap, but there were things in that <laughs> game they, that they, made they, it more fun even for the casual. Field. Yeah, for filthy casuals. I mean, I, I felt much the same with that game Perfect Dark, where okay. you could play with. There was a um, an item that slowed down time, mm -hmm. and I love that weapon. I love that item because it gave me time to set up traps. For people to chase me, I would set it off, set a proxy mine. By the time they realized they're moving in slow motion, uh, they were already in me, the web. They're already in the, uh, uh -huh. yeah, in the blast race of the proxy mine. They didn't notice the proxy mine was about to explode. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was perfectly setting up traps with non guns. The guns I was not as good at, especially on the uh, N64 gamepad. Because as Chris was saying, pointing out to me before, I hold it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I hold it like a heathen. 
Uh, this is actually a great video because this is actually what it looked like on the N64. Yeah. A, a lot of these are like cleaned up emulations. Like, no, this is yeah, what we tried N64 to play this like, like five years ago on a CRT even. And we were like, we can't figure out what is going on on the screen. Could you Motion carry blur killed us? Could you carry two guns in Goldeneye or was this no. the first time you well, could carry oh, okay. two guns? There, there was one there gun. There were a couple you places two, you yeah. could. In, okay. In, uh, but not in multiplayer. But Perfect Dark, yeah. I, I remember that was a distinct feature. I also yeah, remember the two, Alien Elvis they, for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, two machine guns. It was a weird story. <laughs> it was a weird story. It was a gun that could see through walls and shoot through walls. Yeah. Yes, I remember that. And it that homed gun. in on people through walls, and yeah. then you shot them through. Yeah. Ugh. That's the one game. I'm, that's one gun I'm still waiting for them to copy in Destiny. They need a gun that shoots through walls. and I'm... So it sounds like there are things about these games you like, but it's that competitive and Twitch element that you're not so into. I suppose it is, because the Halo multiplayer was fun. Halo single player was not fun for me. Mm. And the other game that 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 this worked in was Call of Duty Zombies. I got way into that because it was different than a regular first person shooter. You were fighting hordes of of zombies. But I remember I sunk hours into that. That was a fun multiplayer. But put me in the regular game. Well, no. And maybe it's not that, for me. It's uh that would be a PVE where it's not player versus player, it's player versus well enemies. enemy. Players well, but, versus enemies. Yeah. But like uh, even more, but this I, I played for a long, long time. I, 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 I think I'm hearing a pattern though, because I kind of feel the same way. If this is true with you with first person <laughs> shooters, I like them when they're not realistic. They're not real world realistic. Yeah. Like Halo is a very stylized <laughs> sci-fi game. Yeah. Call of Duty Zombies, while the base game is realistic, the zombie part is very, very you know, sci-fi. I think I also like very like unrealistic. I need a first person shooter with a different mechanic than just yeah. being a yeah. first person. Or just shooter. having a gun, being like yeah. this, and that it's essentially tower defense. You know, I think is the reason yeah. that it's enjoyable. Also, that mystery box was so fun because you never knew what you were going to get, and it would just set up for everything. But yeah, maybe that's what it is. Is I don't, I guess I disagree fundamentally with the first person shooter style of gameplay for me. It's not as much fun. I don't have as much fun as everybody else yeah, yeah. in these games. It has nothing to do with the content. I think it has to do with the rate of play is definitely different. Like looking at a game like this is different. Like just the way the screen moves. Yeah. Um and I think I'm just more of an adventurer than a than a shooter. Well um, and so like that's that's why like it kind of tied together with me with the, the sci-fi theming. Because you yeah. also tend to have slower uh, time to death, time to kill, basically, in those types of games. You have shields, you have regenerating health in, like, Halo. In Call of Duty, it tends to be you get shot. Like, either you shoot somebody before they kill you or vice versa. Yeah. There's not a lot of, like, oh, I barely survived that, that you know, exchange of gunfire, and I can use another tactic yeah. to gain upper hand. It's like, oh, you got killed because you weren't camping good enough, yeah, or you stepped out of lane. The more we talk, I'm realizing it is, it is the additional mechanic because the other game that I would play for hours and hours was Time Crisis because it had the hiding mechanic, yeah. probably. Yeah. So it, I think it's just the classic. And then, you know, we, we could talk about it this all day, but the, the last piece of the puzzle is really the fact that there was a generation of consoles where this was all there was, and I left video gaming because of it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Which is crazy to say, but it's the truth. If you look at that specific generation, what was that, PS3? The PS3, and Xbox 360, 360 and then the That is Xbox mostly PS4. shooters. Uh, but Time Crisis was awesome because there were different mechanics. There's a time going down. Also, you're in an arcade, and it's super yeah, fun with your buddies. Yeah, you're in an arcade. You're shooting a light gun. I mean, yeah. I feel like a light gun game is really different than a first-person shooter game. <laughs> yeah, why do I love Duck Hunt but <laughs> hate <laughs> Goldeneye? <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's a shooting gallery. It's it's fun. But enough yeah, about me. A, what about you guys? It, um, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'll dive in. Yeah, so I'm going to rant at the end. Well, this one, I see. <laughs> You're saving up for the end. I see. Um, Just charging up. Everyone, this is a formative game in the modern era. Um, mm -hmm. People love Dark Souls. Okay. Right? Dark Souls is like, and it seems like it should be up my alley. People are like, well, this is a really yeah. hard game that you smash your head against, but once mm -hmm. you beat it, beat some challenge, you feel supreme satisfaction. And I get that in a lot of games, but not Dark Souls. For some reason, like Dark Souls, I've tried. You can look at my Steam log. I've put like 100 hours into Dark Souls 1. Mm hmm haven't made it very far and I'm, I'm like i'm like i people i really respect love this game and they tell me i will love this game and it's not clear i know exactly how you feel like, yeah <laughs> I, still, I, still, I still don't know how you got that far and improved enough to get to where you are and you're still like 
I don't know, like I, I watched him play for about an hour. Yeah, and he was at he was in, in Orlando. I remember that in Dark Souls One. Still in an Orlando. Yeah, this area where you walk, it's like a big cathedral, and you walk outside, and archers are shooting full size pikes at you with bows. Yes, mm-hmm. so they kill you like one hit. But once you get the gist of avoiding them, you didn't have to avoid other. And you know, it's it's a whole thing. But Chris was able to handle those enemies, but I could tell he was not enjoying it, and I could <laughs> not figure out why I did not like. Like what didn't click? Are you I saying that about Dark it? Souls poses no challenge to you? No, it does. It's I'm <laughs> bad at it, and yeah. like I don't like, like I, when I get through things, I feel like, oh, I got lucky that well, time. Like I feel like <laughs> oh, yeah. So like I feel so like your skill is not increasing. You well, just feel you're getting lucky. Yeah, well, but that, that's the thing. Like I feel like it is increasing. He's expecting it to feel like oh, I mastered this now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you don't feel mastery of Dark Souls. <laughs> you <laughs> feel like, who I barely made it through. Now, time to barely make it through the next thing until you get to the end. I'm actually a, a little surprised too because is Dark Souls doesn't it just start like there's not story? Yeah, the story is the story of Dark Souls one is like, hey, the world's crappy. Go it's light like, the fire to well, save like which the is world. your style of yeah, like less story, more like, game. Yeah, just jump right. It's basically yeah. and there is lore like if you want to look for it, but it's, it's not like yeah, it, it hitting you in the face. Yeah. It's all very uh, uh, emergent. Yes. Yeah, none of it. Like, there's pe- there are people around that are just like, this world sucks. I have a lot of armor on because this world sucks. And it's, it's, it's like, you're dead and you're in the underworld. And go, go, go f- figure it out. You're not even in the underworld. You're in the normal world. It's the normal but world? Dead. The normal world sucks. Yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, so. Oh, yeah, yeah that's it, right. It, you're it, like an undead or, or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, the main game mechanic is you are, hu- you can be human when you, like, gain a soul, a humanity. And then when you die, you lose your humanity and become basically a zombie until you get your humanity back. You know mm-hmm. what I realize might be a big part of it, and this is very superficial, extremely, but I think it's huge. There's not music in this game. Oh! The whole game is ambient, and there's not like a soundtrack. I don't think I ever noticed that. Yeah, and and so like, I, I, that's a huge part of games for me. Every game that I play, like if it doesn't have an awesome soundtrack, like eh, it's not that good. Even games I love, like if I played Super Meat Boy, a game I love, you turned off the volume, I probably wouldn't have nearly as much fun. Now I, I really just want to see Dark Souls with like. The link to the past soundtrack well, underneath it. So, so <laughs> Elden, <laughs> uh, Elden Ring has lots of music, lots of ambient music, and each zone has its own like kind of musical motif. I'd never noticed Dark Soul did not have that. Yeah, yeah. Go back and play it, and, and because, uh, there's no music. Are you sure you didn't leave the music? Well, you can't I'm have no sure. music without no soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going. You got to yeah. check it. Uh, I'm pretty. There, there's that, that like would explain a lot. Ambient though. noises and like you know, but well, sometimes not. you have to. Yeah, that makes a lot of that makes a lot of sense. You know, you know uh, that is interesting. I've actually almost stopped listening to music in the games because yeah. I found like I'd rather like listen to a podcast or an audiobook while I'm playing a game. Maybe that's why I'm so addicted to Tears of the Kingdom because I've heard all the noises yeah. except for the end. <laughs> but I've heard all the noises so that I don't need I can do two things. Yeah. That was one of the things that let me down about Tears of the Kingdom actually. All of the mo- the sounds and the motifs are the same Ooh. as Breath of the Wild. Like you could have made new sounds, guys. You could have. You could have used you new tones, new like it would make it feel like more of a sequel than or just kind of reusing the the engine. No, no, no. Build things with your new powers. <laughs> <Yeah>. Have fun. <laughs> I love them. I love you, them you both. Can, you can build a music box if you want. I'm pretty sure somebody's done that. But yeah, this like I heard someone say beta of the wild because like Tears of the Kingdom is the finished form mm-hmm. of the game they were trying to build. So there's a lot like I think this game looks great. Yeah. And uh, there's I mean, I love the idea of it being unforgiving, but mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Yeah, you're, you're a that, Battletoads guy. Well, like yeah. unforgiving so is I, your I middle think it's name. Just because you think you should feel more accomplishment after you get past this tough section of Dark Souls and then you get from it. Right. It feels like, man, I just barely made it. And I'm not sure if I could ever do that again. Dark Souls is, is, is it's like the, it's like the emotionally withholding goth girlfriend. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> like no matter what you do, it might make her happy for the moment, but she's not going to be like, you're the best boyfriend ever. She's going to be like, the world is still full of misery and pain. Yeah. <laughs> But thank you for this bear from Build a Bear. <laughs> Dark Souls. <laughs> that sounds like, spoken from experience. There, I like it. Yeah, like you know, like like playing through Dark Souls one. Like I got to the end and finally got to. I used a walkthrough because it's very, like to figure out where to go. Mm-hmm. You still have to do it, which is so I, that's why that's what I use to justify my use of walkthrough. I get to the end and I'm like, I beat it. I'm never playing this game again. Now what? Yeah. Dark what? Souls two came out. I played through it. I'm never playing this again. Uh, Bloodborne comes out and. I skipped Dark Souls 3 because I actually kept that promise. 
Now, now, what is it's what is Dark Souls? Is it an RPG or it's, it's, is it it's an, an action? RPG. It's an okay. action RPG. It's action. I mean, yeah. action adventure RPG. I would say it's more action than RPG personally, because okay. the the the, the step well, to step gameplay is all about hacking and slashing and yeah, but there's direct step important. upgrades. Like you upgrade your yeah. strength and your dexterity and so the, like okay. and you have different. You can use magic. or You can use armor. Weapons like right now, he's he just got like hit by a magic third bolt. person. Third person. I like that he's doing stuff. Yeah, he's he's shooting the snake guy with the arrows over and over again, and a lot of the oh, I see the the damage. Yeah, yeah and and see that's a reticule right there that uh, means he's locked on to yeah, the snake a, guy. So it was inspired by Legend of Zelda by like Ocarina of Time. The um, yes, producer, I heard that. Yeah, the producer was like, oh, I took that game and make a gritty, so uh, gritty reboot that makes you hate yourself until you like yourself when you actually got past the thing. You're not going to love yourself. No. So th this <laughs> what he's doing right now. This is very annoying to me. Menuing? This is way too many hits. Well, this is because oh, yeah. this because like this he, is he, way too well, many. Like hits. you're saying, he's turtling. Um, you can not play this section like this. The problem is the section has a lot of traps. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, the the it, enemy is yeah. taking too much the damage. Issue, yeah, I am bored. Yeah, yeah you don't have you don't and have. He's to not doing something well, different. The because, issue with this is so the range attacks are safe. You can get yeah, me away, but they're, they're very weak. weak. So you can he could be up, but you saw he sorted some of these guys in two hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah the arrows are hitting for fourteen damage. The sword would do like ninety damage. Wow. He's just he's playing he's playing it safe because these blades will kill him. Weez. And he'll be shot by the yeah one hit man. and you're just yeah. dead. This is Sin's Fortress, which is which is just like one of the hardest sections of this game anyway. I beat this section and Chris got past this section, which I was I was very uh it impressed me. First of all, I didn't like the game and didn't find that it, he was improving at it. He. You improved a lot. Can you <laughs> can you jump? Uh, in the first you one, can you, jump, but it's jump. not much of a jump. You jump like off of stuff. All it's right. it's all, the controls. Are, the only way you can jump is you dash, and then yeah, you get a little hop at during your dash. Yeah. In, in, in Elden Ring, oh, the like open world one, you can fully jump. This is one of the coolest things, actually. This Zwei Hunter is a two handed sword. It's huge. Um, and look, he he can't really hold it with one hand, but he's doing it anyway. And the, the game lets you do things that you, you know, it's like, oh, you're cool. too weak for this, but your, your character will stagger as he tries to use yeah, it. And, and, and that's why like, his role is so stilted because he's got too much armor and too many heavy weapons on. The lighter your gear is, the faster you roll. So he's walking around with the iron boots. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Dish, dish, Iron boots dish. and the Goron sword. And, and all you yeah. hear in this is the Goron sword. like the, the clinking of the chainmail and the boots as he steps. That's the only sound of the game. I got to like, bring something up. Did you just notice what what, yeah, what Steve did? He said walking around with a Goron sword, no Bigoron sword. You <laughs> change the pronunciation cuz technically yeah. it's the big, big Goron, Goron sword. sword. But, but you, you do what I did playing well, playing it, it's the Bigoron because sword. Because we're proper English speak. Exactly. <laughs> that is so funny you just did that. I used to do that all the time. It is the big Goron sword. You get it from a big Goron. See, yeah, I was immediately you say big Goron. Yeah, it becomes a shorter uh, a bigger Goron, which bigger is Ron. different than both of them. That's true. Bigger Ron. I don't No, you we're just saying the same thing, bigger bigger Ron. So this I, just didn't print, I didn't I didn't overly hit the O because it's awkward. Big Goron. I, would be, I, I don't think you would enjoy Dark Souls. I think no, you'd enjoy some no, things no, no. about it, but no. I, I, it, it looks too long, and I know people, I know this is another type of game that came out around that, that dark period that I talk about, where it was like you had to give yourself to the game well, completely so, so like, and turn would, your life so, so, so over to it. I would disagree it. with Dark Souls because it's, it's, it's a checkpoint system. It goes from short, bonfire actually. to bonfire. You can literally play this game for like half an hour at a time. You might be able to get to one... To, to, to the next checkpoint, and you can be done for that session. The infuriating thing about this game, it, but it's so hard to get better, isn't it? Like you have to develop physical skills well, in your hands. Yeah, well, somewhat. Like uh, it, it's set, set, set up around traps. Like enemies will ambush you. You walk through a doorway. There might be an enemy behind it. Mm -hmm. So you learn to not either run through the doorway or bait the enemy out. The trick is after that enemy is another enemy perfectly placed. Or when you feel complacent, like, oh, I killed the enemy. You tap into the room. A second one comes out and attacks you. <laughs> so it's more about like, oh, like memorization of scenarios. Somewhat. Yeah, especially Dark Souls 1. Like memorizing like or knowing what type of scenarios it could be setting you up for. It's one of those games where if you know what you're doing, you can beat it quick. Yeah. yeah. Like you go through you it, you know where everything it. is. Bang, bang, bang. I'm done in two hours. That's not even speed running. You can probably finish yeah. the game you in two hours. You know what pops in my head when you said yeah. that? Dragon's Lair. Is like that. If you know oh, when yeah. to hit all the buttons at yeah, the right yeah. time, it is a short and easy game. But if you don't, you die. It's awful. Yeah. So most of this game is repeat. So I've I played a hundred hours of this game roughly. Yeah. 
probably 95 of that is repeats right well, it, it, well, it also the game though it's it, almost four days it, of regret yeah. <laughs> but also a lot of the game is learning when not to fight enemies like you can fight and kill every enemy you come across you can also avoid most of them yeah so like that's what speedrunners do like they'll just run through the doorway with the two enemies to ambush you and they run in a way that they miss the ambush they won't catch up to you by the time you get out of the room and they will eventually stop chasing you so you're into this one i want to know what what are you not into steve um well, as we talked about before, um, I'll make the, I'll do the short one first. Survival games. Oh. Like, I didn't never got into Resident Evil because of the limited ammo. Uh huh. And survival horror, I like the idea of survival horror. I like the storyline of, of like Resident Evil games. I hate the fact that if I run out of bullets because either I mess up or an enemy's just tankier than I thought it was going to be, I have to do the whole section over again. And like, so how like you and Chris talk about how like you that's don't want to play. That's part of it, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, so that's the thing. Like Dark Souls, part of it is doing the section until you get better. Yeah. Resident Evil is doing the section until you get more efficient. And I'm like, get, being more efficient is too much of a pigeonhole for me to enjoy. See, for me, these games, like I tend to be a hoarder in these games. Oh, right? yeah, I, yeah. I hold on to everything and, and, and only use it when I need to. So in these games, it forces me not to. Mm. And it's actually cathartic because <laughs> it'll be like, I'm actually using the shotgun shells <laughs> and I lived or I died. But either way, I used it. Yeah, but, <laughs> but then you're out of shotgun shells. Like in Dark Souls, right. I can still, if I have to, I can punch an enemy to death if I'm good enough to dodge their attacks and not die while I'm trying to punch them to death. I, and that's I, evil. You, you're dead if you run out of shotgun shells. But to, me, kind of, to me, that survival horror, though, is so real when you don't know how the game works and you used all of the ink cartridges over and over and over for nothing. And now you have to go and pass <laughs> like three bosses <laughs> to get another cartridge. I remember I had to beat like the spider and the shark. Oh, like on one just life. Just so that I could save on one life. Yeah, like because I, I wasted it all. Like, I wasted all of those ink cartridges, and that was horror. You're like, oh, I got a shotgun, like, got a shotgun <laughs> shell. Oh, I'm going to save it. I got another shotgun. I'm going to save it. And then it's like, oh, got to get over there. To yeah. This. Yeah. Like, that type of, I, I hate replaying sections of games that are not my fault. And while running out of resources might be my fault, it doesn't feel like it when I'm playing a Resident Evil game. Mm -hmm. It feels like the game is setting me up to possibly fail. Where other, like a Dark Souls game is giving me the tools to succeed if I try hard enough. So I can try to be efficient and find the easy way through. Or if I have to, I can beat my head against it until I win. Um, or run away until I win. Whereas um, this is, no matter how hard you try. I'm going to have to restart if either I mess up or the game is hard at that moment and I'm not good enough to get past it. I, have to, I don't get a chance to, I don't feel like I have the chance to improve. Mm hmm my skills in the Resident Evil game. This is also from a, from a time when like you couldn't go back and get the master weapon. If you missed it, yeah, you it's over. Next playthrough, you exactly. pick up the chest. Like, that's, that's also, brutal. That's why I fell off of Final Fantasy games. Me too. Just reading about, oh, if you missed this chest 10, minute, 10 hours in, you got to play another 20 hours to beat it and then start New Game Plus. And I'm like, yeah. Then I don't want to play it because I want that weapon that was in that chest. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to use a walkthrough. Or you just go, I'm okay with having the weapon I got. And you that, keep going. That's hard. That, that, I, see, spoken, I, like, I, spoken like a true parent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> not, not an RPG. In an RPG, I'm like, I need to be as powered up as possible. Yeah, I just need power, the ultimate weapon. It. Yes. Um, unless I have to play the game over again or grind for five hours on one enemy, then I don't want to. I don't do even it. remember that. Maybe you didn't get into that room. Oh yeah, weed killer. Well, now I gotta play it again. No. <laughs> but yeah, um, oh yeah, I do. You're right, weed killer. And then I was, uh, football games, I kind of have started bouncing off of after EA bought the NFL license exclusivity. Yeah, for five billion dollars. <laughs> for it was like five years or ten years from too, but then they keep continuing it. So um, NFL 2K2, I think, was the last game I made by I played by 2K Sports. It was the best football game ever made. <laughs> and then I tried to play the Madden and it came out the next Cast. year and it was garbage. Yeah, Dreamcast one uh, specifically. Um, you can play behind um, behind the back uh, camera angle. You can play from the side camera angle a la Tech Mobile. Um, oh, that's cool. It was very interactive. It had very good graphics, especially for the time. This is like 2000. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Dreamcast I was wild. I think Dreamcast holds up still. Like, you watch this, you're like, oh, yeah, it's a pretty modern looking game. I just got a text from a friend saying he just found a dreamcast and was oh, like nice. fired up power stone and the little cartridge that goes in BMUs, the dream yeah. still worked yeah the the batteries batteries don't last work. a long time yeah and you can replace the batteries the memory, 23 years the, the, yeah he said like the internal cmos battery will die or something so the battery will die you got to replace it um but you'll lose your save if it dies no yeah the save is okay it does it is yeah. okay. 
did. Oh, I thought you said there was a problem with yours. I had a problem with my game, uh, my GameCube. Oh, GameCube. My the memory cards for the the VMUs are so far are still good. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Dreamcast, it's uh, he's playing Power Stone. He got games as well. He yeah. already had games, I guess. Yeah, yeah. He, he just discovered it one day, and like he spent the whole night just pulling a classic like sleepover with like another 38 year old friend of his it's a great party system and that's <laughs> yeah. how we played it mostly i mean it, it came with the the four ports on the front and we used all yeah four we're like ports. we gotta use all four ports you gotta get all the controllers i had like a red one a blue one and the normal one, and a black one I'd, yeah four it's just wild to see peyton manning as the quarterback <laughs> yeah, th yeah well, that's how old, old this game is for us but, but yeah but it was just like it was nice simple solid football play and then mm -hmm. madden came out and with the exclusivity they started adding more bells and whistles and microtransactions and you had to update the roster, mm -hmm. but you only got roster updates for the rest of that calendar release year. And when the next Madden came out, you had to buy the new one to continue playing. I also wasn't well, all still about play like, this to this day. I wasn't all about like part of the game is being the manager of the team. Yeah. Like, I just want to play I the didn't football. sign up for that. <laughs> I want to take the football, throw it. I want to stop people from catching the football. I want to do the fun stuff. Well, that means you're a blitz man like myself. That yeah, NFL to blitz me was, was the peak NFL of football blitz is games. Very fun. That was my favorite arcade game for a long while. Absolutely. And I remember there was NFL Blitz the League, and you could take steroids in it if you wanted to. <laughs> that yeah. one I felt like went a little too far. Yeah. Blitz but, yeah, the league. Oh, God, like, blitz were, was so good. Yeah, there it is. Well, this is the the Riga, but even like the fact that you could see up the cheerleader skirts is definitely This is a, a generation were, later. Yeah, this was the next blitz yeah this was one of like consoles i think when i but look how simple. in the arcade it was midway right midway, midway was yeah. known for simple games it was a very violent over the top football action game and it was great it's like small teams it's like 707 oh it was yeah, a super was like slow motion yeah, you could stiff bullet arm. time <laughs> yeah so you could do like like crushing tackles and it would do an instant replay in slow motion playing a head to head against somebody in the arcade was always fun but then you only had three plays there were only three plays. Yeah, there was yeah, a handoff, there was a uh, Hail Mary, and I don't even think there was a short pass. <laughs> but like, uh, I, th I think the second one, that's just like Blitz 98 or Blitz 99, something like that. I think it was Blitz 98. Um, they gave you the ability to, yeah, on play, well, no. It was on, on play passes. You can choose which receiver you throw to. But there was no pass interference in the game, so you could tackle the hell out of a receiver before the ball is even thrown and just take someone's receiver off the board. So it's like, oh, press X to throw to uh, Jerry Rice. Oh, Jerry Rice is down. You th press X, you're throwing it to the uh, cornerback. He's probably off the ground, picking up, um, intercepting it at that point. Uh, this mm. looks fun. Like, just the, the way that... It's um, quick. Yeah, it's quick. And I love anything that has a turbo button that has, like, you have to manage the turbo meter, which yeah. NBA it's, Jam did. And actually, this doesn't it. have the license. But Cincinnati oh, yes. and Crusaders. Denver, and neither of them are... Yeah. Wait a minute. It's not NFL Blitz. Blitz. It's just Blitz. Was NFL Blitz... The NBA Jam of football? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's also made by Midway. Yeah, 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 Midway made both. And they, they also made NBA Hang Time. And they made NFL, NHL. Um, I love that game. Yeah, that was one. I forget what it was called. Yeah, but the, 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 the hockey one was just like Blitz. But you I think it was it. NHL Hits. Yeah, NHL Hits. Yeah, with a Z. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it was Blitz, NFL Blitz, NHL Hits. They knew what they were doing. If they just made like a, a soccer one, they probably would have taken over Kicks. Europe and Asia. <laughs> Yeah, they simplify the uh, fewer players on the field at least. I know NBA Jam was two and two. Yep. And this looks like I don't know seven on seven maybe. Yeah. 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 Seven on seven. <laughs> but this wasn't controversial. We all just liked this game. Yeah. We just like <laughs> so it gets around well, to yeah, what you didn't like. Yeah, th yeah. These were fun football games, and then games like this with actual recognizable players were taken off the table by EA. And if they made a quality football game, it wouldn't be controversial. And I wouldn't have stopped playing. I would just play Madden. It's to me, it's controversial because most gamers love Madden because they're indoctrinated. It's, <laughs> well, they're, it's the only game in town. Yeah, it's the only game in town. Wait, so you wait, have to play wait, it. So you is have that to what it is? Is yeah. that what all of our controversy is? Is we're anti indoctrination based games? I would say you don't yes. want to live the Dark Souls life. I don't want to be a first person shooter. And I don't want to be locked in the EA freaking Madden game. There's something there. Yeah. There's something there. Well, I liked it better when they told us what games to play. Uh, well, By you, they, I mean your parents, because they only bought you one. <laughs> well, you used to you go to Blockbuster, you get to pick one of the, the 15 in NES games on the wall. That's I used to go to Funko oh. Land with our $5 I made mowing lawns. See how many games I could buy for 5 bucks for NES and mm -hmm. Genesis. Normally two. They were pretty cheap at Funko Land back, back in that day. God, even the, the word Funko Land is interesting. <laughs>
Uh, but but then so you get into you know you didn't like survival horror games, but I don't think you like any survival games. No, I'm trying to say <laughs> this towards the end because it's going to be. So what? Is, yeah, what what do we define a survival so game as? Survival game is it's anything from Minecraft where you have to harvest materials in order to build things, but the things but you survive, build, yeah, 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 the build things you build are uh, necessary to survive, and therefore necessary to play the game. These are often games that have a hunger meter. Things yeah, like hunger that. meter. You get too cold and and lose health oh, and die when it's cold. Now, Breath of the Wild had that, but you had armor you can put on. Imagine a game where you had to go build the armor by tearing down a bunch of trees and finding a bunch of cows and skinning them and then making leather out of the cows all while you're freezing to death. Well, you're talking <laughs> you're, you're talking about like farming, yeah, ga- based like games where you have games. to far- and not literally harvest moon, but Ex- exactly uh, something but games where, where you have to farm. Yeah, you literally have to farm in order to play the game. Mm-hmm. Now, to some people, that is the gameplay. Yeah, um, I was playing uh, the the recent game Power World, which is ver- controversial for different reasons. Uh-huh. But it's a survival game with small creatures called pals, which are almost literally Pokemon. Okay. That's a whole different thing. Oh, geez. Yeah, that is. Um, that's and- exactly what the. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> and that, I, I, I've, they're not Pokemon, Steve. They're pals. they're pals. Obviously, and Dylan's definitely going to make a short because Pal World is like the big thing in the ether yeah. right now. I didn't know it was like that. Yeah. And oh, my God. That is literally so Pokemon. Notice the title and the boss health is Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Same subtitle and the name and the energy. <laughs> Even has the same sound when it spawns, like in animation. So, yeah, anyway, playing the game, my friend let me, uh, who bought it, he let me play from the beginning. You start out with nothing. You have to build some kind of shelter. To get shelter, you need wood. To get wood, you have to punch trees. And you punch trees, and then the little meter fills up on the side. It's like, you have one wood. You punch a tree a couple more times. Maybe you get two woods. It's random. Eventually, you, get, you punch enough wood and rocks to uh, make a pickaxe. You can chop down, uh, break rocks easier. Uh-huh. You get rocks slightly faster than you did punching them. So it's almost pointless to me. But I might as well just punch rocks for five hours and have a million rocks and then do what I need to do. But the game doesn't allow you to do that because it wants you to catch pals. Wait, these aren't even attacking him. They're just running. <laughs> yeah, no. So they, they live wild. I did I did see the Pokemon company did finally release an official statement saying we're we're going to be investigating this. Yeah, their statement was, please stop bothering us. We see it yeah. now. We yeah. hear you complaining about it. But they didn't mention anything by name. They were just like... Yeah, um, yeah just, this is The phenomenon of which you talk. But yeah, so I'm not even upset about the Pokemon ripoffs. I'm upset that the game that... So many, apparently so many Pokemon fans wanted where you got an open world game where you adventured and fought with your Pokemon and also make them <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, and also make them slaves in your sweatshops to make guns that comes later is you have to build up to that with hours of farming yeah and uh, I was like I don't want to do hours of farming I want to play a game where I can interact with the world as is yeah. And, and crafting can be an extra bonus on top to make something more powerful or make something extra, not the core. Well, that, that's Zelda. The core gameplay. That Zelda yeah. nailed that in that you can do all of this yeah. stuff, but the, you don't the, have to. Zelda is Power World at level 50. Yes. You get level 50 in Power World and you can play Zelda because you don't have to build things to get to level 50 to be able to do whatever you want. Now, it's funny you say this, and, and I completely, I can't agree more. A game that is based on farming first does start to feel cheap and, and honestly makes me start to think of, um, not freemium games, but what's the, like the pay-to-play yeah, 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 yeah. Like mobile play, games. Those yeah, cell phone what are those games. called? Free-to-plays? Free-to-play, I mean, so energy-based no, 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 there's, there's, there's a model that's like really frowned upon, and it's just you got to keep buying gotcha stuff. Gotcha games. Oh, gotcha yeah, something That's, like that. Where you, like you end up spending like three thousand dollars just for like yeah. upgrades stuff. You check your credit card and like your kid went like, nuts on like this Farm game Bill games and stuff. or something like that. Yeah, but um, having it in a in a in a triple A title, I really don't really like. And I, I there was an article that was written that basically said I don't want to play games where I have to punch trees anymore. So I think I think people are catching on that. You know more about programming than I do, but I'll bet it's easier to program a game about farming than to like have it be a fun end and action you're, adventure. You don't have to design gameplay loops and gameplay systems that are engaging. Right. Because you can fill up most of the time with menial tasks. That's what I meant to say. Exactly <laughs> that. Now, these are actually really hard games to make on a technical level. They're very difficult. And this one, I don't know. Specific, I haven't played Pal World. Mm-hmm. I've heard various things. Some people. Well, you could fly. 
No. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot going on, but there also uh, games now. There, uh, there are a lot of foundational things you can build upon that are already made. Mm -hmm. um, you, you buy an engine. And uh, an engine has a lot of things built in it for an open world. And apparently, like, you don't have to write the code that makes the open world. You just have to say, oh, this is an open world. And I'm just going to put a couple things here and there. I don't know exactly how in-depth they got with this. It sounds like we, we've heard there's a couple interviews that these are novice programmers and yeah. novice 3D yeah, modelers. Yeah, the was like, I didn't know how to make a game three years ago. I didn't even know how to make a 3D model. And then I still don't, but we hired somebody that did last year. And now we have a game. The internet's conspiracy is that a lot of this game was generated in AI. Holy shit. That, these are Pokemon. <laughs> There's perhaps legally distinct. We're not sure. That's up for the courts to decide. Like that's, what's I, the Wait, I'm sorry. I didn't called, mean to cut you off. You said AI, you think? Yes. Uh, they, that's one of the... It is one of the theories is that the reasons novices theory. were able to create a game of this fidelity was by basically using AI to crib together a bunch of other stuff. I mean, what does that word to mean? What does fidelity mean? Uh, just a uh, higher resolution, uh, like, you know, quality like this level. world is very fluid and yeah. it's got a lot of detail and texture. So it's a high fidelity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that dragon Pokemon looks dratini. like, yeah, it looks like somebody <laughs> said, chat, chat GPT, make me a Dratini that's purple and slightly longer. Yeah. Like and that. then that's what it could possibly generate. It's weird to see an adult in a game like this. Yeah. Well, and this character, like a child protagonist. This character, because you're going behind them, it's like, oh, it's like a red-haired, spiky uh, protagonist. And yeah. you turn around and see the face, hopefully he turns around. It's no, I an saw old man, beard. Gr grizzled beard, like yeah. grizzled gray beard. It's a great <laughs> concept. At the very least, like Pokemon Company, come on. Well, yeah, it's interesting. So like a lot of the fans of Power World are like, this will light a fire to the Pokemon Company to make a, a, a gritty Pokemon game. But like the epithet for this game yeah, going around guns. is Pokemon with guns. Yeah. Because the, the point of the game, you get to a high enough level to craft guns and then to make a factory for your Pokemon to craft guns for you. And then you're going to shoot other Pokemon with guns. But it is, it, yeah, that's like, that, what, what the, the hell is this? A multi-level marketing scheme? Like that you can, <laughs> you know, you sign up your friends and then your friends can do the work I mean, for it's, it's, you. It's, well, in, in game, yes. It's literally, hey, you, yeah. you want, cause I, I'm like, I don't know what kind of economy there is. If you need to make mass produce them or to make a gun to use, you have to make a factory to Pokemon work in. I mean, this is either way. It turns me off because I don't want to. I want the game that comes after this. Yeah, this is so. This is an interesting discussion point. Yeah. Like, I don't want to play this game. Like, I, everything I hear is like, <laughs> I don't want to do an open world crafting like, game. You no, played no, crafting I, games I really like don't care that. before, like Minecraft and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, like, I love Minecraft, and like, I, I don't. That's yeah. like the granddaddy of of here's nothing, build some shit. It is, but it gives you these tools to you feel accomplishment in Minecraft. <laughs> I feel accomplishment in Minecraft, like. You build something and it's it's very creative and the limitations that are set upon you may force you to be more creative. Uh, and I, I and there's more, that. There's discovery in that game too because it's algorithmically generated and you come you know, across a, a, a mine mm -hmm. and it's this big cavern and you're like, I never saw this before. It was right beneath the surface this whole time. Well, and you see like the amazing things that kids make, like they use Minecraft as a platform for their art. Yes, and that I, my kids are... My kids have been playing it since they were born, mm -hmm. and they're not Literally, sick of it. Yeah. They still play it every other day Wow, with their cousins, mm -hmm. and it has not gotten old. And when it came out, when they were born, it was old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Minecraft is pretty old now. Is it? It's almost it is. 20 years old. Yeah, almost Minecraft 20 years old. Minecraft is almost 20 years old. Yeah. Dylan? <laughs> early, early, early 2000s. Kids on it. Mid 2000s, I, love it. I think. But, and, yeah, so, and, like, difference between, like, a Minecraft and a Power World. Uh, 2011. On the 2011. So okay, it's, it's 13, not 20 years old. Yeah, it's not quite that 13. old. 13. It was. It was uh, this was not out in 2003. Wait, wait, wait. Is that when it was? No, that was when it was. It was released in 2009. Yeah, 2009. See, that's when we were playing it. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It was early. Mm -hmm. It was early access, basically before that was a term. Yeah. Um. Oh, look at that. People ask, did Minecraft come out in 2009 or 2011? Yeah, it's 2000. Depends which what you mean. But yeah, it was available to play 2009. So that's it's 15 years. Yeah. Um, but regardless, like, yeah, Minecraft and Power World, the difference is Minecraft, yeah, you're accomplishing something. You're building things to build a thing. Yeah. Power World, you're building, like, with the, you burn an axe in order to get wood faster, but then you don't need to build axes ever again. So why'd I spend 15 minutes learning how to build an axe if I've never needed to build an axe again because now I have a chainsaw? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's a tech tree that you're, you're developing up through, but only, its only purpose is to get you to the next tech item get you to the next item not there's no purpose in and of itself yeah i suppose like, I, yeah. I suppose i'm controversial in that i don't really care for sandbox games yeah you know in that i don't want to do any of that I, who's the bad guy who did he kidnap <laughs> who, who are my versus? yeah 
Like, what, what, why am I here? What am I doing? And you know what? I, I think I realized that there is a whole generation of uh, people who game to relax. Yes. Not to accomplish winning the game. Cozy games. Cozy games. We discussed this last time. Yeah. But I, I, I am not a, a cozy gamer. Like, I either want a completely passive experience or a fully active experience, <laughs> but not a crazy active experience like a first-person shooter on a modern console. I mean, but it's like a lot of, I don't know, the sandbox games I tend to like are the ones where you can do the story at any time, but you might want to do it. You might want to level up by doing side stuff. Like side stuff gives you things as opposed to side stuff. So like Elder, um, Elden uh, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Oh, here we go. There was, <laughs> there was a, a plot line. I stopped doing the plot line because I wanted to get more powerful weapons and armor. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a bit. And then I came back, did the plot line, kill the bad guys because I was super strong. Which I have done. Which is when, there, when there it wasn't is a purpose, some, but it was yeah. I can do that when there is an actual ultimate weapon. I don't want nine different kinds of ultimate weapon. It's like, nope. What is the Hadouken in Mega Man X? There's just one. That's all I gotta you, get. You I'm not your, doing the other bullshit. You want your tech tree to be a line. Yes. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> but it probably came from Mega Man X in that if you do all this, you get this one super move so you can one hit any bad guy. I don't want oh, you could have Amazing defense, amazing attack, amazing stamina, or don't give me or. I want the thing that's 100 max on all of them, and there's only one, and you have to get it at one time oh. in the game, and if you miss it, you can't get it. Well, well sorry, that's the rub in a lot of sandbox games is you can have all three at once, but that means you got to do all the side crap, mm -hmm. which takes time. So it becomes a cozy game when you're trying to do all the stuff that takes time to, you know, fully max out your character. You can just run through some of those games, like Assassin's Creed 3. That's probably the one I've enjoyed the most, quote mm -hmm. unquote. Um, that's a <laughs> traditional sandbox game where it has a 80 different icons for you to collect. I collected like five of the icons because they were kind of fun. They were like puzzles. Mm -hmm. The rest of it was fighting through the story. So I fought through the story. I fought enemies to like level up so I can fight more enemies, tougher enemies easier. Like in an RPG or like in an action game. I mean, it's game. literally what, it, what but, we were talking about before the podcast. I was saying like my addiction to Tears of the Kingdom has gotten more advanced in that now I need to have two stars on all of the armor. It wasn't enough to just get all the armor. Yeah. And I'm doing all of this just so I could beat the game that I could have beat 29 hours ago, but now I'm too invested. Well, but then so when you I have to complete it. Yeah, but then when you do beat the game, you have, you, you know, you've mastered it because you've gotten all the armors, you've gotten it, two stars on all the armors. So you know the world inside out. So you can beat Ganon sure. anytime. You don't have to beat Ganon. I you know. know that you're good at this game now. Like, I know, but, but you remember, you remember there was a campaign for a game back when platformers were huge. There's a game called Vex. Can you look this up? I vaguely remember. I so, think Vex. No, I think Vex. I'm thinking of Vex. Vex. <laughs> that. Um, and basically, there was a. There was, it's a so Clascott, um, um, a mascot Plascott. platformer with attitude. I, think, I like Clascott. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we gotta find something for Plascott to apply to because I like it. But this game was made in response to the collectathons that were coming out. I, uh, you know, a la Rare, where it was making a lot of them yeah, with Banjo yeah, Kazooie. And I remember the, 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 I don't remember the game at all, but I remember an image for the game coming out and it said, no collectibles, no coins, just Vex. What is, what is and now I'm looking at power ups yeah, and I'm like, yeah, what I'm the sure. hell were they talking? About? But that concept I loved. I, I would love to get games that are coming out that are just just finish it. I mean, there's no extra stuff. Just have fun Mar 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 and finish it. <laughs> was that game? Well, this well is, there's a lot there's of a lot extra yeah, stuff to get in No, no, no. I want no optional. options. I don't want any optional. You know, this, is, stuff. this is come from the guy who's trying to level up every armor set in, in <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom. Yes, I fell into a black hole of completionism and I desperately want out. <laughs> so you want a game that doesn't offer that because you know you're weak to it. Yes, I just want go straight, finish the game. There's nothing extra. Yeah. The great, the great, because you know what? The best treasure was the friendships that they made <laughs> along the way. Well, see, that might be a reason for you to play a Dark Souls game. Because if you try to go and collect all this stuff, you're going to be beaten to death over and over again. So you just want to go straight through the critical path so you don't keep, like you're critical literally path. stopped from being, from wandering too far afield because you'll just die. What's the game that we bring up on every episode that is kind of like, like episodic, like it, it each, like, uh, out there or a, another world yeah uh it, you talk oh, um, that, that type of game where like out you of go this in, world out of this world out where of like this you world. go in and a monster just attacks you and you got to learn it and you yeah. can run between multiple screens yeah there there's, was, there's not like pickups in that game like yes. really 
Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Like, the whole point of this game was just finish it. Yeah. There's nothing extra. And there was a sequel, and I think it's by the same developer, Dylan, if you can look. Flashback, right? Well, I think that's a direct sequel. I'm talking about it was a game called Heart of Darkness mm. Oh, for yeah. the PC. Yeah. I loved this game because it was like this. Yeah, there it is. Heart of Darkness, PS1. Yeah, PS3. so it was like this. You had a little laser gun. Oh, you were like a little dorky kid. There was a collectible that you could get at the of of some kind at the end. Well, it was like that. Yeah. Things just murdered the hell out of you. This this is just 2D Dark Souls, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> but but you didn't have to find the gun. You didn't have to find the helmet. You just came in with all of this stuff. You had everything you could need, and all you had to do was finish it. The only goal was to finish it. I remember it came with 3D glasses mm. because the final cutscene was a 3D glasses cutscene. Oh, wow. But what I loved, I played this for hours with my buddy Chris, and what I loved about it was just that just finish. You're not going to miss anything. Survive and finish. So maybe oh, that's what it is. Maybe I just don't like collecting things because <laughs> of my addiction to collecting things. <laughs> Have you played Inside or Limbo? Limbo? Yes. Oh, my God. I love both of them. Both of them are you just finished the game. Yes. Oh, there it is. There That's it why is. I love those games so much. <laughs> Thank you, Play Dead. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, this this was the most recent one. Yes. In, uh, and and everyone, this has a great story at the end. Most recent oh, yeah, one, seven years ago. <laughs> wacky and disturbing at the end. Oh, but, no. Um, yeah, you're right. I think this is about how far, as far as I got. was. The, you didn't finish it? Yeah, I got to like this much uh, like fungal. There's not much left thing. after this. Yeah, so it's a short game. And I think. Wait, wait, wait is this limbo or inside? That's this, inside. This is inside. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I played Limbo all the way through. Okay. Inside, I got to this. Limbo is yeah. the one with the big old spider monsters. Yeah, yeah. That just like and it's, it's all black and it's all silhouettes. Well, and uh, it's just horrendous deaths. Speaking about collectathons, how do you feel about like Metroidvania or search action games? That's a good question because those are all about collecting power-ups in order to be able to continue the critical path. You need to collect things. Something about, yes, I, I feel like a, a Metroidvania, uh, what's the one that's about the bug? They're making a sequel Hollow soon. Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight. Hollow, Hollow Knight 2, I really enjoyed. But I did, I, and the reason I really enjoyed it is I didn't collect everything. <laughs> you know, I, I found out there were a couple of really interesting moves that I wanted. You know, like the thing, it's the Super Metroid where, like, she charges up and go, psh, blitzes forward. There's one of those in Hollow Knight, and I knew I wanted that. So that pushed me forward, but I did not feel obligated to level up everything. So maybe the thing about a Metroidvania is there's so much in it that it's almost not possible to really get everything in the game yeah. while still enjoying it, I'll say. I think, I think it would become a job at one point. Hmm. Interesting. So sometimes you like collecting things. I guess so. <laughs> I, I, it's almost like the I mean, collectible has to be worth it. I don't. Yeah. Oh, this is a perfect example. Get back to controversy. I think trophies is one of the dumbest things <laughs> ever introduced. Because that is just, you're just causing pain. All you're doing with trophies is causing pain. And you're not getting a real reward. There are games where you collect everything and get a real reward. See, and those, I, I enjoyed. No, achievements in the Xbox 360 was my first exposure to that. And yeah. For me, it was like, all right, you really like this game. You beat it. Here's another way to play it. Here's another goal. It's to another have in this reason game. to continue. Another playing reason. It, yeah. and it's like, all right, well, I beat the game, but I didn't do whatever. And mm -hmm. it's, I, I, I don't like the ones that are just like completionists, just like collect all the X in this level. Like that's fine. Yeah, I really yeah. hate the ones that are like, please beat the game four times. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Oh no, I'm but not playing it that many. Sometimes times. the creative ones would be like, hey, get through this level without jumping, mm -hmm. and I'd be mm -hmm. like. What? I never thought you about it like a that. Challenge? Yeah. Challenge accepted. Let's well, that go. would speak to like a like a meat boy would be fun to do achievements, I think, for you. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. And not I, for not for normal people. I got all the <laughs> achievements in Meat Boy and I loved it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> By playing Do a lot. Thumbs per, per, bleed? Per, per, perseverance. Per, yeah. Yeah, there's only like three or four games I think I've ever purposely a hundred percented that weren't just like the game gives you hundred percent. Yeah. Like uh what was it? I don't it wasn't called Pac Mania, but it was like the Pac Man that had like Pac Land? No, it was it was like the one that was like psychedelic almost. You have like a Pac Man time DX. Yeah, Pac Pac Man DX. Like I wonder if that, that Pac Man one. DX. It's yeah, great. It's it's a fun Pac Man game. It's multiplayer too, but you get like you get a chain of Pac Man Championship Edition. Yeah, so this is yeah. it. It's so fun. Whoa. It's, it's like a, a a massive score chase <laughs> game. <laughs> um, so it's still a score chase game like Pac Man was, but it, it is like 
um, you know, on steroids. It's, but, it's super fun. But you know what else? And this is an interesting concept. There's points. Yes. Yeah. Points can be addicting and fun to get like high scores and stuff like that. Absolutely. Just getting like, oh, if you do all this, your Pac-Man will be blue. Yeah. It's not worth it. No. <laughs> I know? agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, but points arguably give you less. You're just making a number go up. You're right. Yeah. Your skin. <laughs> <laughs> you just get more points. Yeah, yeah, but you get to put ASS on, <laughs> at, on the arcade screen. Oh, I, f- I, I want to pl- go back and play this game now. It's got to be on Switch. It's super it's good. Form, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, whenever you get close to a ghost, it slows down because you bullet time, so you have a chance to save yourself. And then at the end, you get the power pellet, and then you can eat a thousand ghosts. It's a chain of ghosts. Oh, what? How satisfying does that look? Uh, very. It feels very. Right this would rumbles, be fun in like, like a Dave and Buster's type environment too. Yeah, and this is one I don't think they ever actually made an arcade version, which is a sh- what? Because if and when cool. we make our I've, arcade, I've seen a Pac-Man game in the arcade. <laughs> I like our big with the tees. art style. Yeah. It wasn't the same game, but it had the our had this art style. Yeah, I saw one at, at like a laser tag. I place. mean, shit, I remember Pac-Mania when you could jump. Yes, you could jump over. Ghost scrolled, the first. Oh, it was a three D. No, it was a three D. Isometric Pac-Man. where you could jump. I hate. Yeah, and there's something else controversial. Maybe for 15 years ago, I hate isometric games. 20 years ago. <laughs> Was it Sonic 3D Blast that put you on that, this? I Can like, I see Sonic 3D Blast, That please? was the first and last isometric game that I liked. <laughs> that you liked? I, I only liked it because... It was so stupid I, hard. I, I only liked it because it was a Sonic game. If it was not a Sonic game, I would have hated it worse than I hate Indian in the Cupboard. <laughs> which is the movie I hate this most in this world. Um, I bought it at there Funko Man. It was a full. It was a full price. I paid sixty bucks for it new. Lickies. And I'm like, what is this crap? You don't even get to run fast. Mm-hmm. But it has some puzzle elements. So I'm like, oh, okay, the f- puzzle elements will help me out because I can at least, you know, it reminds me of Marble Madness. I guess that's isometric too. Yeah, it is. Now, okay, that's my first and favorite and only isometric game I like. And this that was, was a hard, disappointment. Hard crap. This was very disappointing, especially after Sonic and Knuckles. What the hell? See, Mario, yeah. RP- Mario RPG is bad. my Mario, favorite game. Mario RPG is I definitely have, and I have not played the, the remake because I'm stuck in this completionism that is Tears of the fucking Kingdom. Just you, be Ganon for the love of God. You can always come back to Tears of the Kingdom too. You don't have to play it all That's what I said on Breath of the Wild and I never, never. went back. Oh, okay. You don't need to get the stars. You already got the armor. I think I got all the stars last <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, are, man. There might be two more. This game was like, yeah, I get to play Sonic, but I have to play it in isometric. Uh, point of view, and I can, I I understand it fine. It wasn't like I had trouble, you know. Grokking was on screen. The problem comes from the fact it's not fun. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no reason this couldn't have been a side scroller with classic Sonic levels. Besides, they wanted to try to show off their. Uh, well, I mean, the the the, the sad they're part not 3D. of this. They're, yeah, they're, they're not 3D. The sad part of this right. is like there was supposed to be a 3D Sonic game that came out on the Saturn. They couldn't pull it off. So this came yeah, out and then cross they made platform this instead, because yeah. this came out on Genesis 2. Well, they wanted, everyone wanted to come, they, they were like, all right, we're going to make a 3D game. Uh-huh. Mario 64 comes out. And everyone's like, well, it's not as good as Mario 64. And still, the brave developers uh, made put Bubsy 3D out after Mario 64 <laughs> somehow. They still did Gex it. Gex 3D. Yeah. Well, uh, start, I think Croc actually beat Mario 64 to the punch, though. Might have I think Croc was at first, but I, no, not at all. It was a tank control game. They hadn't even figured out controls. Yeah. Now, the animation in this game is cool. Yeah, like this actually like this is a, fun to watch. A two D perspective, yeah. like it looks pretty good. But like it's, but it's not fun. Like you don't any of the speed lines, like or like, you know, t- place you can go fast. It's a Sonic game. It's also not like how Sonic works. He's bumping why, into why enemies with a spin if to this kill was a them. Mario game, I would have loved it. If it was yeah. any random mascot game, I would have loved it. Should have been a Knuckles game. But as a Sonic game, this is like since when is a Tails game? Sonic doesn't beat enemies by running into them. That's the one thing Sonic doesn't do. True. <laughs> this this feels very much like the uh, Dylan. Can you see Mario Brother Sonic two is of in the Sonic uh, series, where it's a different just, game uh, that they Sonic three D Blast the just type Super Sonic. You I'll Super be Sonic shocked. In this? Oh, you're trying to see if there's holy shit! You can. Whoa, that guy! Ah, Scenic O Nine. Traveler's Tales, yeah. Look I'll, how awesome that intro movie is. I never wanted to play any other wow. Traveler's Tales The power Tales of CD-ROM right there. Is that the Sega CD version? Uh, Pretty sure it's the Genesis version. It had that real choppy uh, CGI intro. In oh, it. here oh, we wow. go. Are they going to show? Yeah, they got to get the, the coins first. 
Yeah. See if he's yellow. Uh, even less in front of you than in the 2D games. This is brutal. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, you can't <laughs> run because you <laughs> don't know what's be coming up because it's isometric. Yeah. So you definitely can't run down. Oh, oh wow. Up, they did right, do it. Maybe. Oh, it looks like it's a temporary uh, power. We'll watch up. it from here. Well, it, it, it's, it's always Whoa. temporary. You get 50 rings or so. And you, so now and now his he rings just are going down. And now, now it makes sense. If the whole thing was supersonic, he but could touch people. Sonic, be, that's invincible. Well, he's yeah. faster, too. Slightly faster and he's invincible. That's you're supposed to be able to fly a supersonic or fly along the ground at least. But you know what? He can't run fast enough to show the animation. That's crazy. He was having trouble zeroing in on those enemies too. If you notice, he kept on uh, overshooting. Well, By the way, this fast. is not if a controversial take. If you ever played him in Smash Brothers, Supersonic is real fast. This is not a controversial take that this game was terrible. <laughs> well, no, not this game was terrible, but isometric games like this. Yeah. People. Cubert? You don't like Cubert? Cubert, have you played Cubert? No, Cubert's not, not a, a long fun time. Game. It's probably bad. The fun, it's the, the most fun you get from Cubert is watching the center curse words he said. Let's yeah. look at let's look at uh, Cubert. Yeah, then. so like Super <laughs> Mario RPG, I liked it. I didn't love it as much as some you know you guys did because it's isometric. Oh, <gasps> part of that because part it, of the charm where you go behind the curtain and you come out and you're the original eight bit <laughs> Mario running once, once oh. yeah. That's once, a nice gimmick. Once is all you need, man. It's a nice gimmick. It happened once. I don't care for it after that look at cubert having fun in isometrics yeah cubert is i would not necessarily recommend cubert he's a piece of arcade history but you try to play this game man eh. wait Kubert, is that where snake rattle and roll comes from i don't snake see, rattle and roll on the nes is it based off of technically oh, I, mean, I don't know that game it might be the character in this game is named coily technically i oh, don't yeah oh, i, I the, think the snake it's, character yeah i think it's Unrelated, just happens to be another 8 bit snake. Yeah, oh, so, wow. this game walked so that Splatoon could run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're changing the color of the ground. Is that a good game? I've never played that. Splatoon's fantastic. Really? It's a yeah. third person shooter. It is a third person shooter. Um, yeah, it's all about painting. Well, I like third person yeah. shooters, as we've discovered. Um, you might it's enjoy about it. using different types of spray paint. It has a really guns. good campaign yeah. single player mode, too. And then the multiplayer is you try to paint the mo more of the ground than the other team. Yeah. Or the other players. There is a chance, though, that some of the uh, old man moves too fast sort of thing it might come into play. I feel like the movement, I don't know, in the first one, at least, it was very Nope, deliberate. not related to Cubert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was very deliberate in the first one. I haven't played the other ones. You can, you're all um, squid people. Is this multiplayer only? No, no it's a great single player, single player mode uh, campaign. I saw that the the preview for the everything. third one looked like I don't know, know apocalyptic. One. Yeah. <laughs> well, so this is all lore wise supposed to be post apocalyptic. Earth. There's there's hints that it might be post Mario Brothers Earth. Yeah. Really? Like the there's the ants because you're playing squids and your enemies are the octo octopods. The octopods uh, ancestors. Oh my god! No, the squid ancestors are the bloopers. From Mario, there's like a, a cave painting. That's pretty of cool. bloopers. Oh, like bloopers turning yeah, 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 into yeah. like the white bloopers, and I was like, "Is this supposed to be the same world?" So this is the main competitive mode, and right now, um, the the player is the orange team. They want to paint as much of the stage orange as possible, mm -hmm. and when the time runs out, whoever has the most of their color wins. Oh, I like it. So yeah, there's 25 seconds left, and you know, you die. The the blue the blue ink kills you. Uh, but you so you can either play this game aggressively killing people or play this game sneaky just painting everything where they're not oh interesting and you can have like a nice mixed team we have two people that are just focusing on painting the ground and if more aggressive players taking out like there's a, a paint sniper yeah gun you just snipe people with we'll see paint. who it, I, they look like they got pretty good coverage i think orange is gonna win but i'm curious to see oh, the map i think so at the, end, at the end it shows you the map oh no blue won. yeah who the hell is this cat i forget his name but he's like <laughs> <laughs> i love him yeah, he's, he's uh, got he's, a little suit. <laughs> he's, he's the judge. Well, <laughs> as far as controversy, I think we are more controversial than I ever would have thought between the three of us and our thoughts it's, on giant have, games. Well, yeah. Giant it's, games. It's one big giant game that me and Chris have a very controversial take on. I don't know how you feel about this game. I've okay. never played this game. We talked about it in yeah. advance, but... Uh, Uncharted. Game, Uncharted by Naughty Dog Studios. Which is one of the most heralded, awarded games yeah. in the last couple of generations. Uh -huh. It's a trumped a up, movie. <laughs> it's a jumped a trumped up Dragon's Lair. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to put it. It's basically it's it's cutscenes that are strung together with like some shoestring gameplay. And so a lot of people, all they want is like a pretty thing uh -huh. that unfolds in front of it's like you want a past completely passive experience. Play Uncharted. There's <laughs> Uncharted Two has an opening sequence where you're on like a train in like the Himalayas or the Alps. I forget some snowy mountains. Yeah, and it like falls off the track. The track falls apart, and the trains 
if you saw this, uh, the latest Mission Impossible, yes, the train scene was literally the scene from Uncharted. Oh, yes. really? So they stole that from except, that. except it was more boring because you're outside the train, not inside. Well, you're inside and outside. Well, you kind of go in. And, so wait, you go through. is it like a like a hit a button at this time? You hold up game? sometimes. You hold up you to hold climb. Up. Something falls at you. You stop holding up so it doesn't hit you. If it hits you. Hold up, press up again quickly before you fall off. Yeah, so the gameplay, like, it, you sit back and, like, it tries to make it feel enthralling, like, things are falling past you, and oh my god, you're dodging it, but you're holding up and letting go of up. <laughs> holding up and letting go of up. It's, it's very not a game. Yeah, very cinematic, not it's much not gameplay. Game. You get to the actual shoot up, like, levels you have to shoot enemies. He has lots of moves. He can tumble roll, he can dive, he can slide. The targeting is trash. The yeah. enemies targeting is trash. They're very easy to hit. Yeah. Isn't he also like a mass murderer? Oh, yeah. You just yeah. shoot he hundreds of dudes. He kills hundreds of dudes that are just, yeah. As in, a, it's very bad. So I it's thought it was like a Tomb Raider. Where is this stack in? Is Tomb Raider? So Tomb Raider is much, very much more interactive, especially the newest trilogy that came out. Yeah. It's like a very well made, well, like, well appointed. Action adventure. Tomb Raider game. is a video game. Yeah. And this it's a video is game a video game. This is a movie with uh, quick time prompts. Yeah. Like you have control of Lara. I and might like this because I like quick time prompts games. <laughs> yeah. You might enjoy. I think you might like this game because, like I said, that's why it's controversial. Lots of people love it. It's a very, especially like if you want to watch, if you want to play a movie, this is what this is. Is it, is it what easy? You do. It's pretty easy. Yeah. I think there's difficulty settings. Uh, when, and that particularly. It basically, how much of a bullet sponge are you during the shooting sections? That's the difficulty. Hard stop for Dylan. Is is she wearing a hot dog backpack? Um, I think it's a parachute. If I had to it guess, looks like it looks dog. like a hot dog. It looks like a hot dog. Yeah. There's <laughs> one of Dylan's dogs. This is a new thing we're doing across all podcasts. Dylan's a big hot dog guy. So the plane looks like a hot dog. It looks like a hot dog. Like a reverse <laughs> yeah, hot dog. Everything's a hot dog. A hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm so glad on this episode of Tell Me Talk that we got a Dylan dog. That is awesome. Yeah, like a like nice like sing, stinger. Dylan is dog. <laughs> now we got one. Hot dog. Yeah, exactly. Dylan's dogs. Hot dog. So this is a movie, not a game. That's, Controversial take? I think so, because we know people that swear by this game. And they're like, it's one of the best games of all time. And I'm like, where was the game? Steve and I are the only people we've met. Who don't enjoy this game. You know what? We really don't enjoy it. I can tell because it's only three and a half hours long. Yeah. This is a full game. This is a full uncharted walkthrough. Yeah, full game walkthrough. There you go. So that's a movie. It's a movie. Yeah. It's a Wait, you could play this in a sitting. Yes. You could. Somebody could watch you play it eating some popcorn. Well, and you know, it's got a great streaming. (laughs) It's got a great presentation, and people like the characterization and the voice acting and the storytelling and the environments. They like that stuff. It's just hold up, but they like it. <laughs> if it was more than just hold up, I think I could play. So it's not, not only that, but me and Chris all talked about this a lot. Like when games have over intricate animations and not one to one control, we have varying levels ah. of how much we don't, how much we, we'll, how much we will put up with it. I'll like, put it that way. You press but, the A button, Mario jumps immediately. Yep. You press the jump button in Uncharted. He, he like winds up, up and yeah. winds up and then gets ready to leap. And then and you can't much. cancel the animation. So he's mid jump. If you want to pull out a gun and shoot something, yeah, wait till he finishes well, I, jumping. I, then you can shoot. I have heard that about this game is it is a beautiful game. Yeah. But the beautiful, it, it looking so realistic and being such a beautiful game impacts the gameplay. I would argue, yes. Yeah. And, and then you have a game like the newer Tomb Raiders where there's some anim- some longer animations for certain things, but it's also, to me, it makes sense yeah. in the things that are happening. Like, oh, you go to pull out a weapon. She puts a weapon away, pulls out another weapon. It takes a second. It's not mm-hmm. instant swap. But that's fine because you prefer you a game to a glitch. Weapon, put it away. You can still like glitch. You can take new Lara and you jump off a cliff and twist 180 and yeah, shoot someone and out do of the stairs. Something and like, not be locked into a jump animation until you've yeah. done the arc of the jump. Like uh, <laughs> it, it just feels so much worse to me because again, to make it more cinematic, you have to lock in those animations because you want to see the whole animation through. That's right. And you set the gameplay at that pace. I want to be able to go at the pace I want. I want to be able to go faster if I want to go faster. Go slower. Take my time if I need to. If I need to snipe, snipe this guy, I want to snipe him. If I want to run up and shoot him and hit him in the face with a bat, I want to run up and shoot him in the face with a bat. I don't want to be like, oh, you can't hit him with the bat because 
this level gave you a bat. <laughs> because you don't have a sniper rifle in the cinematic, so you don't have a sniper. You can't use any other weapons. You got to use the bat. To this day, I won't play a game that Nolan North is in, which means I can't play any video games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you might not be able to play the new Indiana Jones game that was just announced because now it's first person because they didn't they wanted it to be different. And as far as I can tell, now Nolan what if it's North a first voice. person cutscene? Like if it's just like this, all cutscenes, but first person. Because see, that would be way more boring. That would, yeah, then, then all of us would just like. We'd all agree. We're going to. No one. Yeah. Uh, Indiana Jones, I, I don't think, was a franchise to resuscitate. I'm hoping it's it's a, a fun spin on something like a Metroid Prime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Chris awesome. said, that, said that to me. I was oh, like, I can see be that great. being fun. Yeah, I forgot about those types of. That can be a fun first person experience. Yeah. Um, as long as short rounds in it, I'm good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the actor, voice actor doing Indiana Jones, I'm 99% certain it's Nolan. I've heard him in every video game, so I know the tenor of his voice now. He's the number one voiceover guy yeah. in, in, in video games, thanks to this game. Yes, thanks to this game. Yeah, like, I, I hear him doing his Harrison Ford impression, so Chris might not play it because of that. Uh, oh. You might not play it because of first person. <laughs> might not, I might not. I might not play it because of the first person as well. I'm not a fan of first person adventure games. Basically, we hate everything. If it, Contro- if, that's not controversial at all, unfortunately. If, it, if, if it's not video. in space, I don't want to be in first person. Did you guys see the Uncharted movie? It was very bad, yes. <laughs> so the Uncharted game is a better movie than the yes, Uncharted movie. 100%. I didn't see the movie. They, you the, don't have to. The movie was, a, <laughs> I think it was supposed to be a past piece of the first movie, but they changed a lot of stuff. They changed a bunch of set pieces for no reason. They had an action set piece already in the game. I guess they wanted to make something their own, but they were bad. Yeah. You know, there's like a, hot, a hotter balloon sequence. Cross your fingers, maybe we'll get Uncharted the movie, the game. <laughs> oh, hey, I might play that, <laughs> especially if it's trash. Yeah. Yes, it'll probably be more like a game. I know that one. My friend Marie, who I have another podcast with, she loves Uncharted. And uh, when that game movie came out, she was very angry. There's a, the like older character, his name's Sully, and yeah. he's like the mentor to the main character. And movie, he's played by Mark Marky, 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 Marky Mark. And she's like, that's not Sully. That's yeah, so, Marky Mark. So he doesn't even have a mustache. Yeah, so the game's basically Sean Connery. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, just cool older dude that teaches you the ropes. And then you got, hey, hey guys, it's me. I'm hey. Sully. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you want to jump off this plane? Jump off this plane. <laughs> well, folks, what are your controversial opinions on games? We want to hear the games that you didn't like. and uh, But more importantly, we want to hear the games that you did like. And we hope you enjoy games. And there's a lot more games coming. Because this is Tubby Talk, and these guys have got a couple of tricks up their sleeves. Yeah, it's going to be a good year. 2024, hype. See you later. (laughs) Hot dogs. (laughs) I'm Mark Wahlberg. (laughs) (laughs) Young John.